This is a tutorial I'm making for my 2D03 Economic Issues class on externalities, calculating net benefits. In this case, we're looking at a positive externality, vaccinations. Uh, we're going to calculate private and social benefits. We're going to calculate an optimal policy. We're going to find the net social benefit with that policy. Uh, this is in response to, um, I'll call it a lack of success on test two. So if you're working through this example and you want to pause the video to see how you do um, and then pick up with me at the end, so the last maybe 10 seconds of the video I'll have the answers posted. If you want to work through the example and with me or if you want to work through the example and you get stuck and you want to catch up, just fast forward through. I'm going to do the entire thing coming through here. So an externality happens whenever a social or private our social costs and private benefits are different from social benefits and private costs. So if the private cost differs from the social cost, or if the private benefit differs from the social benefit, or some combination, then you've got yourself an externality depending on the direction. So if the social benefit exceeds the private benefit, you've got a positive externality. If the social cost exceeds the private cost, then you've got a negative externality. Or if the social benefit isn't the same, is lower than the private benefit, then you've got a negative externality. Um, these things happen a lot. Uh, it's pretty much the only reason you want to tax or subsidize something, uh, unless you've got equity for efficiency on efficiency grounds. Um, we'll call it that. So let's get stuck into it. First thing to do is to make these into price as a function of quantity. Uh, this should be automatic. You should be able to pretty much look at one of these, especially a simplified version like this, and just be able to do it. Uh, that should be automatic. If you don't know how to do that, come and see me or talk to a classmate and figure out how to do that, because that's very important. So the first thing was the private benefit at the market outcome. I've posted the equations that were interested in in the top right corner there just to sort of illustrate them. Um, so this is just a straightforward uh, what is the consumer surplus uh, that you should be familiar with even almost from first year. Actually I think from first year. And now we need the market quantity which we should be able to do fairly straightforward. and there's your private benefit at the market outcome. That should be fairly automatic. That should be straightforward. There should be no problems with that. Okay, moving on to the social benefit at the, mar mar at the private outcome. Okay, here's where a lot of you got stuck. Um, we're considering the area underneath the social demand curve, but above the price, up to the market quantity. So while we know that the social optimum is going to be here, we're looking for the social benefit at the market outcome, which is not going to be the same, it's going to be restricted within the domain of 0 to 220 units of vaccination because the extra, well eventually 50 that we're going to want to pay for, are not bought by the private consumer without some form of subsidy. So this is the social benefit at market outcome. And you can see I've subdivided the area of the benefit into triangle B and rectangle A. So we're going to calculate those two amounts and we're going to get a total benefit out of them. So what we need to know to calculate that is this intercept right here, which means we need to know this point right here. Fortunately we have two equations relating price and quantity, so it's better to pick the price as a function of quantity because we know the quantity, right? So we have 110 minus, and we're going to use our market quantity. All right, and that price is going to be 36 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's the point that we're looking at here. It's 220, 36 two-thirds. And of course my graph is not to scale at all. So then it becomes a simple matter of calculating the area of rectangle A.
and triangle B. and then adding the two together. Okay, so this right here is our net social benefit at the market outcome. Okay, that got most of you, I would say, on the test. All right, so the next thing to do is to calculate the amount of the subsidy and the net social benefit. So the first thing we need to do is find the, op the social optimum, the Q star and P star. Then we're going to find the amount of the subsidy and then we're going to calculate the net social benefit. Two and three you can do in whatever order you want. This is just the order that I want to do them in. Okay, so just like finding and just like we did in the first part, we're just going to plug the $20 into the social return function, uh, which is going to give us a Q star 270 units. Okay, now what price induces 270 units to be consumed by our private actors? We need to return to the private function, plug in this socially optimum quanti oh, socially optimal quantity, and then get the, the P star, the market price that we want to induce from that. That is the price that we want the private actors to face in order for them to buy 270 units, which we've come up with as the socially optimal quantity. Now we need to find the amount of the subsidy. So if the private actors are facing a $20 price and we want them to pay $750, this is just the private, the ordinary private cost minus the price we want them to pay. So the subsidy amount is $12.50. Last thing to do is to calculate the net social benefit. So we can do that by using the price of $7.50 and then put the tax back in um, as something that the, they would have to pay and then be reimbursed. Uh, we're not going to bother with that easier to think of it that way if you've got an upward sloping supply function. In this case we don't. Um, so we're going to think of just doing the net social benefit the same way we did the net private benefit. My bracket's wrong there. Okay, and that's our net social benefit right there. One thing to notice is that an external externality problem, once you've put in the policy, so the optimal subsidy or tax or quota or whatever, the net social benefit should always be higher than it was at the market outcome. And that's good for positive and negative externalities. Uh, it's also worth noting that in the case of uh, positive externality, the market quantity is always going to be higher than it was under the private outcome. And in the case of a negative externality, the market out the market quantity is always going to be lower than it was under the market outcome. Or the, the socially optimal quality quantity will be lower than it was under the market outcome. And if you followed me through the example, then that's it. I would suggest you practice these questions because um, they're worth knowing how to do. Um, so if you've been following me through the whole way, you're done. And I'm just going to, as promised, take the last 10 seconds to show all the answers in one place.